You also have to be knowledgeable about what's happening in Carson City in our legislature. Uh, these are two things that came out of the last legislature. This one is, uh, uh, it became effective on January 1st of this year. The other one that became effective uh, in, I believe this was in October of 2017, but just recently, uh, also out of the last legislature, um, is Nevada Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, and employees have the right to be free from discriminatory discriminatory or unlawful employment practices based on pregnancy, childbirth, or related conditions. So there's a lot of elements to that one. And that is a new Nevada state law, and that's one that's going to be really watched closely. Yes. Okay, I think um, she's asking about an accommodation for somebody who comes in to take over somebody who's on leave. And you want to know about that person, what happens to them? So it's not usually uh, recommended that you do any kind of a contract. Nevada is a right to work state. The moment you start doing contracts with employees, you start crossing that line and now you are subject to more um, exposure. Um, usually when you hire an employee, you do an employment agreement. Here's your salary, here's your benefits, it's a right to work state, et cetera, et cetera. What we were talking about and what I think the question was is that if you had a key employee such as myself that needed to, under one of these rules, be allowed off 12 weeks and you needed to fill a temporary position, there lies the problem because who's going to come in and work for you temporarily. They, they, if they're looking for work, they want to be with you permanently. By the time you find somebody, um, by the time you actually interview and find somebody you, that, that, and train them, um, that time will probably be gone. Um, you could perhaps interview and, and hire somebody and not tell them it's really temporary, but at the end of the day, all of that stuff catches up with you. But your association is trying to put together, and perhaps how already has, is that when you find yourselves in a problem like that, shorthanded, I think that you guys together as an association can depend on each other and maybe get help from the other agencies, from the other firms. Thank you for the question. Okay, um, so our next uh, step, we're talking about interviewing and hiring, and you're all going to get copies from Dr. Wyman and the association of these, so I'm not going to read all the way through it, but this is pretty much about just being very careful when you read resumes. Um, you'll see something on there that says, look out for dumbed down credentials. That is, and I, at first I, when I first saw that for the first time, I thought, what do they mean? What that is, is like people who are afraid that they're, they've, they're overqualified for the job. So you might not want to hire them. So they're dumbing down their credentials. And uh, it's the same as people who raise them up. But look for employment gaps, phony responsibilities. And then specific accomplishments. You want to highlight the remarks that need clarification so that maybe you can do a possible phone interview ahead of time instead of having someone come in because you can learn a lot if you have some questions of by having really under understood and read that resume. So just ask questions that delve deeper. That's the main thing. And you want them to focus on specific instances like it says of success or failure. And also have them detail about when they were happiest and when they were not the least happy or, or satisfied within their company and know something about maybe find they'll study something about the previous employment culture that might help you understand what type of place these people are fit into. So uh, make sure you avoid all questions about 
age, race, sex, family responsibilities, national origin and disabilities, those do not have a place in your interview. And you have to be prepared to answer some tough questions too because applicants have a lot of them. And so, you know, be prepared for that. Post-interview, um, here's, here's something. A lot of people say you, need, you should go to social networks to see people's profile on the social. We say, if possible, try to avoid checking the applicant's social profile unless it's related to their career specifically, like LinkedIn. It's, you know, about their business life. And um, the other thing is to check your candidate's reference paying close attention to their, their previous work environment. So if you choose the right applicant just based on technical skills, experience, interpersonal skills, work style, and cultural fit, that should serve you well. And if here's something you might find interesting. If an unsuccessful candidate calls you and said, says, why didn't I get the job, we suggest we fill the position with a more qualified candidate. So, and then after you've hired them, there's the evaluation process, and you've all probably all been through that in your lifetime. And there's some information there about it right now, but what I want to point out is the HR trend right now is to skip the reviews and stick to documenting their good and bad job performance. and it promotes a little bit more effective and timely communication with your employees because as these things happen, you address it. And so you're constantly working with your employee and they're working with you in trying to make sure that they're doing the best job they can and the same from your side, that you're being the best employer you can. So that is a, a good trend that's happening. So part of the description of the class was firing. So we're calling this separating employees. Resignations and terminations. Here's some things to remember. Ask for a letter of recommendation. Remem remember to ask why they're, pardon me? Is it misspelled? <laughs> Resignation. Remember to ask why they're leaving. Remember to conduct an exit interview. And the reason you want to conduct an exit interview is because you want to learn a little bit more about where you're not meeting up with, uh, as you should. And you also want to get the employee's perspective as to why did they resign? Why did they quit your company? And other things to remember, have all the supporting documentation that leads an employer to terminate an employee. You have all of that there. And I, we have also put on in this list of handouts here, this group of handouts, there is a termination a completion checklist so you can go through that and that'll help you but follow the progressive discipline three strikes verbal written final termination file management really important if you don't just throw things into a file one big general file you really need to manage that paperwork and if you're just you know throwing them in and putting their name on a file tab it's time to make some changes and you have to create a main employee file. It's going to have their application, their resume, the new hire paperwork, the corrective action, the performance reviews, if you do them, and other paperwork relating to employee performance. And you want this file to represent the employee's work performance, so don't include items that would allude to a protected class. And pull out any paperwork that includes medical information. You need a separate file for that. And the Form I-9, we talked about how important I-9 is, must be kept separate from your main employee file. We have all that information here and, and exactly how you should follow those rules. So you can pick that up in the uh, handouts here. Pardon me? Oh, the I-9 is proof that they are, uh, they are citizens or they have the right to work here in this country, either through you know, visa or whatever, work visa. So it's really important at this stage. And they'll check you on it. And it should never be in together with all the other files. But the, the two pieces that I have here on I-9 are very, very specific about what you need to do. So set up uh, separate files for any information that alludes to a protected class. 
such as the EEOC voluntary identification form. Uh, employee file management includes also knowing how long to keep paperwork. So um, we have some information here that should help you with that. And good documentation is essential for successful human resources. Um, so if, and if you manage your employees, you probably have regular conversations with them about their performance. So make sure it's important that you may have a written document of those discussions. And now I'm going to turn it over to Bill to talk about payroll risk management, workers' comp, and benefits. Dr. Wyman's talking a little bit more of the transition away from that concept of progressive discipline. You all might have grown up under hearing that progressive discipline. You had different things well, every time there's an infraction. Today, nowadays, it's not progressive discipline. You should be <coughs> interview. You should be counseling your employee whenever, just like Dr. Wyman said, letting them know when they're good, when things aren't working right, and dealing with those as those go. Um, we talked about the three stri strikes rule that Sidra just talked about. It, it could, it's all different depending. If I'm a longtime employee of yours for years and years and now I'm starting to uh, be tardy and late, you're going to treat me different than somebody you just hired for the first 30 days and they've already been late two days out of the week. That could be grounds for immediate termination. Me, you're going to sit down and say, what's going on? What's changing? Here's what's going to happen. We're going to have a performance improvement protocol. Here's what's going to happen over the next 30 days. And so you're going to deal with those, but the whole key is what Dr. Weinman said, is that you should be not waiting for the annual review to be talking about it. You should be doing that as it goes, all right? Um, the other comment I wanted to make is that the EEOC and the Nevada Equal Rights Commission, they're not against us as employers. What, what happens, though, is that e even back in the labor days, where, where mining and just employees weren't being taken care of. And, um, you know, they were exposed, they got hurt. And some of these rules have come out of protecting, protecting employees. But at the end of the day, the Nevada Equal Rights Commission and the EOC wants us as employers to be successful. And we can expect 
employees to come, be prepared to work, and do their job. So here we just went through this uh, whole scenario where you can't ask them about uh, their age or do they have any medical conditions, can they do the job. But what you do have the opportunity to do is once the job is offered, you can ask what is called post-hire questions about can they do the job. So remember, your, your employment application is the first legal document of your relationship with your employee. Um, you don't take a resume in lieu of the application. That's great that they brought you a resume, but they do complete the employment application. You're gonna, at, you're gonna show them job description, and you're gonna ask, is there anything on this job description that you're unable to do? It might be lifting, li lifting um, equipment or uh, being able to be here on time. Um, it, it's a number of things. And then after the job is offered, um, we recommend that a client is, an employee is taken through a post-hire questionnaire that includes, have you had any surgeries? Is there, is there anything that's going on? And you'd be surprised what you find out. And uh, we had a situation where a, um, um, a construction company hired a young woman and she was supposed to drive door to door, taking water samples, and she just had a major surgery. And that came out in the post-hire questionnaire. And so the employer asked for a doctor's release to do the work and the doctor wouldn't release her. So it's those kinds of things that are important as, a, as employers. Payroll, you know, payroll is more than just cutting a check. Uh, it involves all the taxes that are going on, um, the Affordable Care Act, tracking all of that data, the burdens on you as an employer to track all of the taxes and the payroll. Um, QuickBooks, um, Intuit has a good um, uh, 